we're going to look at applied optimization. We have been looking at the first row of tests for being able to find extrema, looking for maxes and mins, and so those obviously have a lot of great applications. If we are looking to make as much money as possible, we would want to maximize profit. If we wanted to include in that, if we want to maximize profit, that might require minimizing cost. And so optimization, optimal, is just what is our best outcome? And that depends, right? Because again, if we're looking at cost, we want to minimize that versus if we're looking at profit, we want to maximize that. So optimization is just looking for the highs and the lows. We care, we want to find a particular one, uh, but that'll depend on the situation. So let's go to some examples. Let's start with this one. 216 square meter uh, rectangular pen is to be enclosed by a fence and divided into two equal parts by another fence parallel to one of its sides. Which dimensions for the outer rectangle will require the least amount of fencing? How much fence is needed? So I always recommend drawing pictures, especially for geometric shapes, start with your picture. We are told that we have a rectangular pen. I'll label my sides X and Y. We're told that we're breaking it up into three, uh, sorry, two equal pieces, which will mean that we have three sides of X and two sides of Y. Of course, the outer dimensions are just X and Y, but that third side X in the middle is to break up our fence. Now, why did I use three X's and not three Y's? It makes absolutely no difference. The X is just what I've chosen to call the vertical side. Had I chosen to call it Y, all we would do is get our answer switched. So for instance, if I end up with the answer of 10 and a y, uh, for X and 20 for Y, and you'd done it the other way around, you would have gone 20 and 10. It's just a uh, position that's gonna be done. Makes no difference. All right, so let's think about what we are trying to find here. We want to find what will require the least amount of fencing. Least amount of fencing, fencing is the sides, the perimeter essentially, the perimeter plus because we have this little extra here, side here. So we are curious about the perimeter, which is equal to 3x plus 2y. And we want to minimize this. But the problem with this right now is we have too many variables. With our optimization, with our maxes and mins, our um, first derivative test and our critical points, we need a function y in terms of x, right? We have to have two variables. We have an independent, we have a dependent. So we're going to have to use something else here to help us get one less side. And we're going to rely on the fact that we're told that we have 216 square meters of rectangular pen. The entire pen area will be 216, and we find that area, 216 is equal to x times y. So this was given information. We can take this, we can now solve this for x or y, I'm going to solve it for y, makes again no difference. So y is equal to 216 over x. Now I'm going to come back over here to my perimeter equation and plug that in for my y. And let's go ahead and simplify that. So the perimeter equation would be 3x plus, uh, that would be 432 over x. If I want those potential maxes and mins, I need to find all my critical points. Those are my uh, turning points where we might have mins or maxes. And to do that, we need to find the derivative. The derivative of 3x is 3. The derivative of 432 over x would be a negative. Uh, 432 x to the negative 2. Remember, 1 over x is just x to the negative 1, so I'm treating that negative, uh, that, that denominator is next to the negative 1, bring the negative to the front, subtracting 1 from the exponent. So there's our derivative, and critical points occur, one, where the function, uh, where the derivative is undefined, and two, where the derivative is equal to 0. So we can see that the derivative is undefined as x is equal to 0. That was actually not in the domain of the function. Uh, obviously, 0 would probably minimize this shape pretty well because that would mean all of our sides are zero. If all the sides are zero, we don't really have a pen, but we haven't used a lot of fencing either. Not what we're after. So the zero is not going to be real helpful. It is important to note, pay attention to where your derivative is undefined. They can give you critical points. Uh, but then also I need to see where the derivative is equal to zero. And so we're going to have uh, 432 x to the second, uh, negative 2 is equal to 3, just added that over. I'm going to multiply that x to the other side. So I have 432 is equal to 3x squared. I'm going to divide by my 3, x squared is equal to 144. And then taking the square root, we get x to be equal to plus or minus 12. 
keep in mind it would be plus or minus, especially if we were doing this theoretically. Uh, the 12 and the negative 12 would both be critical points. Here, we can't use a negative side. Again, we're dealing with a real life physical fence. We can't have negative fencing. And so what we see is the one dimension has to be 12. We still need to figure out the other dimension. Luckily, we have this y equation that we've already created. So y is going to be equal to 216 over 12. And so when we go to simplify that, that will give us 18. So now we know the dimensions. The fence needs to be, uh, we're dealing with meters, 12 meters by 18 meters where the 12 will be uh, the 12 meters will be the side that occurs the three times. So that will be the side that we have um, three fences, be the side with three fences. You do need to make it clear um, which side it is that is occurring multiple times. We need to make sure that we are not just saying 12 and 18, because then which one do I split? So we are splitting the side of 18. The 12 is the one that uh, has three fences. Now, I just kind of took this as an assumption that the 12 is going to be what minimizes. Remember, that was our goal is to minimize. All that I really found here is that 12 is a cr critical point. Have I really proved that this is the minimum? No, I haven't. So really, I need to add that step in here too. Let's, off to the side here, do a little work to prove that the 12 is the minimum. So we're going to apply our first derivative test. Remember, our derivative was this um, 3 minus 432 x to the negative 2. That was our derivative for the perimeter. I need to look at, let's say, um, 1. And then I'm going to look at the derivative at, say, 13. And I better see that the signs switch around that point. So let's go ahead and get our calculators, type it in. 3 minus 432 times uh, 1 to the negative 2 is just going to be negative 429. And then we're going to have 3 minus 432 times, uh, we'll have the 13 to the negative 2. And this time we get a positive 0.44378, whatever. I don't really care what that is. That tells me we've gone from decreasing to increasing. So decreasing to increasing. That has to be a minimum. We definitely have a minimum at that 12. So this is really something we need to show. We need to show that we actually do have those signs switching. I made that assumption at the start. I shouldn't do that because uh, it could be that we have multiple critical points. We thought the zero was going to be a critical point for a minute. It turns out it wasn't important. But it could be we have multiple critical points, maybe 12, 15, and 18. Which of those is actually my minimum? Uh, maybe both of them are minimums, and we have to see which one is smaller. So we still need to remember everything that we did in the first derivative test. We need to be able to test which thing is actually the smallest. That is our only minimum, the 12, and we saw that here. Um, do you think there might be a case where I try to trick you guys and give you something that has a pair of of critical points and only one of them is minimum or one is lesser? Absolutely, you guys probably know me well enough by now. So always do that little first road test to check that we do actually have a minimum. All right, so we're halfway there. We have the dimensions. We also need the amount of fence. Remember that's the other part of it. And so now we're gonna go back up to the perimeter equation. We knew that, we now know that the x is 12, the y is 18. And so we'll have 36 plus the 36, uh, 72. Uh, need 72 meters of fence. And so there we have it. We started by coming up with our equation. We then found where the derivative was equal to zero and undefined to get the critical points of the equation. Then we tested to make sure that we actually had a minimum. And finally, we found exactly what we're looking for, plugged all the numbers in to make sure we really knew what we're getting. All right, let's take a look at this one next. A 1,125 cubic foot rectangular tank with a square base, x feet on a side and y feet deep is to be built with its top flush with the ground to catch runoff water. The total cost, c of x, uh, equals 5 times x squared plus 4xy plus 10xy. 
what value of x and y will minimize the cost? So again, we have a geometric figure here, just kind of get an idea what it's going to look like. Square base, uh, sides are both x. It has a height to it. And so you guys know by now I'm not an artist, so that would be the shape of the thing. Try and make it look a little bit better. There we go. All right, so we have our square base, and then this is kind of going upwards. Um, it looks like I have it laying down its side right now, but uh, this thing would be standing up where this side here, the Y, shows me um, how tall the, the figure is. We have a cost equation. We want to minimize this cost. Um, but the problem is very similar to the last one in that we have two variables. We have an X and a Y inside of this cost equation. Uh, I only want a single variable. Really, it's not a function of X yet. That's a problem. Let me correct my equation. Right now, we just have a cost equation based on two variables. I need to have it based on one variable. We need to get that C of X. So let's think about the other thing that we're told. We're given the total volume. The volume is equal to 1,125 cubic feet. I know the volume is just all the sides multiplied together. So x squared times y, x times x times y, or x squared times y. And so y is going to be equal to 1,125 over the x squared. I take that and I'm going to plug it in for my cost. So we're going to have x squared plus 4x times 1,125 over x squared plus 10 times x times 1,125 over x squared. And now we're just going to do a little bit of simplifying. So we'll have 5 times x squared plus, I can go ahead and multiply that 4 times the 1,125. That'll give me 4,500. And then I'm going to cancel out one of those x's to just get a single x in the denominator. Over here we're going to have 1,125 times 10, which just means I stick that zero behind it. And again, the x cancels. Let me also go ahead and distribute that 5 because that seems like it's going to be easier. 5x squared plus the 4,500 times 5 will give me 22,500 over x plus 11,250 over x. And notice we have a pair of like terms. So really, we could have simplified this equation notice at the beginning too. Would have probably been a little bit easier. It doesn't really matter because we're going to get to the same place in the end. So when we add those two numbers together, we will have 5x squared plus 33,750 over x. And now that we have a cost equation in terms of just one variable, we can actually do what we want to do, which is try to find where is the minimum of this thing going to be. So I'm going to take the derivative. Get a 10x, we get a minus 33,750 over x squared. And so similar to the last one, we can't have x is equal to zero. Uh, that would be an undefined value, but we also, if we're going to build a tank, we have to have a side. So even though x is equal to zero is a critical point, it's not really because it wasn't in the domain of the initial function. The initial function, we couldn't have it. Uh, so we're going to ignore it. It wasn't in the domain of the original function. Let's set our derivative equal to zero. I'm going to add the 33,500 at 33,750 over, uh, still over the x, equals 10x. I'm going to multiply x to the other side, so we get 33,750 equals 10x squared. I'm going to get rid of, uh, should be, excuse me, this should have been over a x squared over here. In the previous line, we had the 33,750 over x squared that we added over. That was an x squared, not just an x. So now when we multiply that to the right-hand side, we multiply that x squared over, we get a 10x cubed. And so x cubed, when we divide off that 10, will be 3,375. And if we take the cubed root of that, uh, 
uh, we should get, let's see, we're going to get just 15. So x is equal to 15 is a critical point. And like we talked about in the last example, I shouldn't just assume that this is a minimum. I need to test that. So let's come back up here to our derivative. 15 is our critical point. Let's see if it's actually minimum. So I'm going to look at the cost to the left. I'll look at the cost to the right. Just plugging in 1 because it's an easy value. 20 because it's a larger value. It might be easier to see. We plug in 1. It's going to be 10 minus 33,750. Definitely a negative. I don't even really care what sign it is. Then if we plug in the 20, we're going to have 10 times 20 minus 33,750 over the 20 squared. And that's going to give us a 115 key as it's positive. So once again, we're going from decreasing to increasing, which does tell us that 15 has to be a minimum. That is what we were after. If we'd seen that it goes from increasing to decreasing, we'd have a really big problem. It has to be a minimum. So on these applied optimizations, don't just bank on the problem working out where the one number you get is the min or the max or whatever you're looking for. Actually test it out. Do that math. Be safe and test it, especially when you have multiple critical points. All right, so we have our x value of 15. We needed the y, so let's go ahead and take our y equation. y is going to be equal to 1,000. 125 over 15 squared. And when we do that, we're going to get a y value of 5. So we now know the dimensions. That's all we really asked for. Uh, the base of the tank should have dimensions. of 15 by 15, and we need to remember our units, and they were feet on this case. The tank needs to be five feet tall. And there we have it. So applied optimization, no different than the first derivative test that we we're dealing with up to this point. It's just now we're putting some words behind it. We're playing applications behind it. So of course the challenge is developing those equations, taking what's given to us and writing an equation for it. Once we have that, it is really just the same type of problem.